Good day, fellow investors. Welcome to the stock market news with a long-term fundamental investing twist. We try to put the current news and a lot happened this week into a long-term investing perspective to give you the lowest risk, highest possible reward investment opportunities out there. So this week was very, very busy. Interest rates went bonkers on Monday, overnight interest rates. So the Fed actually lost control. I made a video a few months ago how the Fed will lose control. All central banks eventually lose control. And that actually happened on a small scale this Tuesday, sorry, but will happen again in the future is inevitable. So that's what we're going to discuss shortly, the interest rate conundrum with the Fed. Then we're gonna talk about the global perspective of the economy. The OECD came out with a slower growth forecast for the economy. What does that mean for you and your investing? We're going to put that into micro and macro perspective. And then I'm going to conclude with why it is important to follow the news, but also always to look at win-win situations. A, I don't lose much. B, the upside is unlimited. So let's start. So this week really showed how financial markets are very, very fragile because you look at the short term overnight repo rate, it went bonkers, it went above 10% and the Fed immediately intervened by putting more cash. The reason for this was that there was tax to be paid, there were treasuries to be bought and suddenly liquidity overnight dried up. A lot of banks, institutions, companies use that overnight liquidity based on their long-term securities that they hold. So the Fed immediately intervened and calmed things down for now on this, let's say, overnight market. The message that I got from this is, okay, whatever happens, whenever it will happen, there will be immediate intervention by central banks. We have seen in Europe, more printing, money printing after they stopped it. They saw, okay, it doesn't work when we stopped printing money, free money, giving free money to the community, to businesses. So we are now buying back bonds and everything and printing money to oblivion in Europe. The Fed immediately intervened as soon as something happened and they are trying to prevent a recession. This leads us to Wednesday, Powell, the speech, lowering interest rates in an environment that he calls insurance to keep make the economy going as it has been going. That's something, again, he cannot control. The world is too unpredictable. Yes, he can delay something, help a little bit here, help a little bit there. And then we are already talking about fiscal stimulus. So giving directly money, monetary, monetary policy free, new monetary policy, directly money to governments to give directly to people to spend. That's what's coming. And we as investors have to prepare for that in a, let's say, I don't lose money way and I make it big if I'm right. That's the mindset we have to have in this environment. It is unpredictable. And I'll show you why the environment is unpredictable. So just a year ago, interest rates, the rate of increase was very fast. Everybody was expecting higher and higher rates for longer. The average federal funds rate was expected to be free in the past, even higher. And now that rate is going lower and lower. So average long-term interest rates are expected to be lower. The thing is that this is unpredictable. Nobody knows what interest rates will do. If we look at over the long term, it's crazy. It goes up and down. It has been always crazy and it always will be. Don't get sided in your thinking, but by what happens this month, you can see that what happened last year is already different from the environment that we are in currently. So we never know what will happen in the long term. The key is that you prepare for everything or better to say anything. And then if we look at the economy, this is very important. This is the news, the news, the OECD, lower forecast for growth also for 2020. And you see this chart, lower forecast, lower growth in percentage points, very, very bad when shown like this. Further, if you look at the micro level, I was looking at some chemical companies this week, Umicore, global materials technology, recycling, 
etc. for clean mobility, how they like to call them. But again, they are producing things for diesel car production, light duty vehicles. And you see this contracted production 12% in China, Europe 6.4% down and North America down 3.6. This is the reason why car stocks have been cheap over the past year, year and something years. And actually here is a decline in production, strong headwinds in the automotive industry and no concrete signs of immediate recovery. This is the news. O the OECD comes in later with their forecast. This is what is already happening. Further, China unemployment rate slid to 5.2% in August. Okay, now temporary news, but the long-term news here is something else. Average weekly working time of employees across the country was 46.6 hours in August. This is productivity. They are working uh, on average 46 hours. That's more than let's say the average in Europe. And then again on trade wars, I want to show you something apart from the general news. I've been reading the conference call from uh, Archer Daniel Midland. And the question was about how the supply chain is shifting. As there is trade war between US and China, those customers in Asia, China are shifting their supply chain to South America. And when they can't buy from the US or it is more expensive, they shift it and they buy somewhere else. The negative thing about this is that once they buy from someone else that can offer more stability in supply, the customer for the US, for the American farmer is lost forever. So these trade wars that go, go on have very, very long-term repercussions. When there was sanctions in Russia, many US drilling, oil drilling companies lost their business in Russia as Russian businesses weren't allowed to use their technology. They developed their own technology. Now they are using Russian technology. It works well, but now those, that business, that country is lost forever for US companies. And that's something we as investors have to think about in the long term. It's not that everything will return to the previous state. No, some things are lost forever. And that's also what you have to keep in mind when it comes to investing. Always look at the long term amidst the short term news. Further, something very interesting on a micro perspective here that also shows how the world will continue to grow. The Dutch government recently gave their budget forecast for the next years and they are planning to install 2.1 million charging stations across the country. This tells me, okay, we are really going to an electrified world. A lot of copper will be used to do this. So as an investor, I'm looking that I'm looking for certainties, certainties that will be there that will limit my downside and leave the upside to unlimited. Also something that I will discuss in a special video in the coming days. So please subscribe and click that notification bell so that each time I post a video you get a notification. Okay, Sven has posted this and then you see whether it fits you, your interests or not. Someone of you might be interested in mortgages, someone will not be interested in mortgages. But then tomorrow I'll do a dividend a yield stock, a dividend growth stock analysis, a good dividend growth stock analysis that might be interested of you. So just subscribe and click that notification bell to support the channel. Thank you. Going back to certainties, so 2.1 million charging stations in the just the Netherlands, if that becomes the norm over the world, it is unlinear, but electric vehicles and electrification renewables are slowly coming and will be probably what the main topic over the next decade. So if we position ourselves smartly, that's smart. Secondly, with interest rates that we have been discussing at the beginning of this video, we don't know what will happen, but we can limit our downside and have unlimited upside. And that's the message of this channel. And I'll make a special video on fixed and variable interest rates for mortgages to show you how you can take advantage of the current situation, no matter what, that's the main message. Further, if you want another certainty, this is the OCD global growth forecast. Okay, it's down from 3.5, 3.6 in 2017, 18 to 3% growth, but it's still growth. And it's very likely that no matter what, no matter where recession, US or something, the 
Global economy will still grow at 2-3% and this is a certainty I want to invest in. 4.5 billion people in Asia continuing to grow. They want to reach the level developed countries have, get out of poverty, especially Africa. And over the next 10-20 years this will probably happen. This is what you are doing. This is what you have to invest in, no matter the short term noise. And you have to pick out what kind of an investor you will be. If you look at Buffett, what has he been doing over the last 50, 60 years? Buying good businesses at a fair price. Businesses, good businesses means that they cannot go bankrupt. Businesses in positive structural sectors with positive structural tailwinds pushing them up. American Express, finances, payments, globalization, Coca-Cola, globalization, growth, more people. Insurance, more cars, more people driving cars, more insurance. So he's been living in that strong business, positive tailwinds at a fair price and just let the business do what he, the business is doing. So that's what also I do. I'm looking for good businesses, positive tailwinds, growth. I see more growth now in Asia. Over the last 50, 70 years, Buffett has been investing in the US because it was growing very fast and he took advantage of it. Now, I think we should shift and find more exposure to Asia. And that's what I'm doing. If you want to check everything that I do, check my stock market research platform with my portfolios, with a lot of research on many, many companies where not to invest and where to invest. So feel free to check it, check it out. And let me know if you have any questions, always send me an email to see whether this is for you or not. It's not for everybody, but two to 5% of the population, I think will really appreciate the diversification and the research in that research that I do. So check that out. Further to summarize, we don't know what will happen with interest rates. We have to be prepared for anything. We do that by investing in great businesses that will do well no matter what. And then to see what I'm talking about tomorrow, I'll make an analysis about Rio Tinto, a dividend growth company exposed to all the growth that will happen over the next 10, 20 years, electrification, renewables, whatever. So subscribe, click that notification bell. Let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas, share your ideas. They're always very interesting to watch and the great feedback that I get from them is very, very valuable. And also to get a better picture of how the market breeds, always read and comment in the comments. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.